how much is Boltmann in view in what Voss is writing here, or is Boltmann more of a mere developed, you know, person who is who is starting with this particular theory? Although there might be many people that have this theory, and then Boltmann took that and developed it. And so when Boltmann is looking at the New Testament, for example, and the the miracles and whatnot of Jesus. He would say you need to start with this, but you have to demythologize it and and get the husk off of this revelation uh, in order to find out what the bare kernel is. Like, what's the real lesson? What did God really want to teach? We don't necessarily need all that other husk and cruft, you know, of of miracles that don't exist. Yeah. See, the brilliance of Boltman is is that he by framing his kernel husk approach, which is New Testament. Um, extension of this theory. What what he did that was so brilliant is he said, we're demythologizing. And what that means is not that you lose interest in the kernel or the husk, actually, but that you learn to ask the question, what does that kernel intend to teach? And Boltman the reason we would locate him more in a radical tradition where he's moving beyond bare liberalism is that here, as Voss is pointing out, the kernel revelation theory is aimed at discerning ethico-religious principles. In other words, it's ethics. Um, The universal fatherhood of God, the universal brotherhood of man, an ethic of love, an ethic that denies um, the care warfare that you find in the Old Testament because the liberals are so embarrassed by it. They don't understand care warfare as an intrusionary prolepsis of judgment. They think it's just the barbarism of under-evolved humanity. Yeah, what you see with right? jihadism today. They, they, yeah, you know, yeah. Militant. But the, the brilliance of Boltman is that he says, look, when we're demythologizing, we need to recognize that the kernel is really telling us not about ethics, but about how existentially to cope with the fear of death. And and so it's, once again, a form of reductionism that I think has a family resemblance to liberalism. But in the case of Boltman, instead of it being the reduction to ethics, it's the reduction to um, existential authenticity. The, sure. the scriptures teach you how to be existentially authentic, a la Heidegger, mm-hmm. whereas here, uh, with with the liberal tradition, the scriptures teach you how to be ethically virtuous, uh, a la mainline, standard, post-Kantian liberalism. And so it's fascinating you ask that question, Camden, because uh, Boltman would be a kernel theory proponent, but his the family resemblance would be with liberalism that both the liberals and the radicals like Boltman use a kernel theory. Uh, one takes it in an ethical and idealizing direction, and the other in an existentially uh, um, regulated direction. And and so I think Voss, the the beauty of what Voss is saying here is that whether it's the ethical pure liberalism, the existential radicalizing in Boltman. Um, the reduction to the intuition of the prophet or the apostle being what has divine authority behind it. And then the verbalizing of that intuition with the cultural forms of the ancient Near East, if you're, if you're Old Testament or a, um, or or a Greco Roman um, mythology, if you're, if you're Boltman in the new Testament, uh, on on either scenario, both are going to wind up being reductionistic because the words are going to be the discardable shell and the kernel is going to be either the ethical insight or the existential insight, sure. whether old or new. Um, so it's a great. it's a great question. And I think it shows that you really can't take Boltman out of that classical no. liberal tradition. He's just radicalizing it. 